So welcome everybody to this next video on algebraic manipulation. In this video, we'll be focusing on simplifying where we are dividing two terms together. Now, when you have two algebraic terms being divided by one another, so in other words, no addition or subtraction signs are in sight, then it may be possible to simplify the expression. You may also be able to simplify if the, either the numerator or the denominator is just a number. Now, before we get started on this topic, then that there is going to be, to make this topic easier to understand, that some prior knowledge on simplifying fractions and rules of indices is going to be useful. If you're not too sure about those two things, I will include some links in the description below that forward you to these two particular topics. Now, before we get started, let's have a look at some, re some basics. So here we know that 6a means 6 times a and vice versa. a cubed means a times a times a and vice versa. a squared b means a squared times b or a times a times b. Now, one of the rules of algebra is that we don't use division symbol. Instead, we write it as a fraction. So again, you may be a case of where you might need to go from one to the other, but a divided by b can also be written as a over b. And then the next thing comes on on simplifying fractions. So again, we're not here to eliminate any numbers, just to make the numbers easier. So what you want to think of is the biggest factor that goes into both 18 and 24, which in this case is going to be 6. Now, if you think big, it means you've got to do less work. So, for example, uh, we're going to have 3 over 4. However, if I had 18 over 24, I could have divided both numbers by 2, leaving me with this, and then I could divide by 3, which would give me the final simplified answer. However, you can see here, I've done it in two steps, whereas if I thought big, I've done it in one. Now, also, you can also simplify not only proper fractions, but improper fractions as well. So here we've got 24 over 10, so that's going to be simplified as 12 over 5. I'm going to leave it as that. Then incorporating the rules of indices, when you're multiplying and the bases are the same, then what do we do to the powers? We add them together, so that's going to be 3 plus 7, which is a to the power of 10. And when we're dividing, we do the opposite, so we take away. So this is when the base numbers are the same. So here we've got b is our base, which is common. So here this is going to be b to the power of 4 minus 2, which is b squared. And finally, we can also end up with negative powers. So this is going to be b to the power of 3 minus 10, which is b to the power of minus 7. Now, there is an important note that you need to be aware of, and that is that like when simplifying with multiplying, you can only simplify numbers with numbers and common letters with common letters that appear in the numerator and the denominator. You can only, the following can only apply when you just have one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator. Now, what that basically means, if I just get rid of this bubble, is for this particular video, if I had 3ab over, let's say, 12abc, and let's just stick a square there, then that's fine because I've got one term in the numerator and I've got one term in the denominator. Where this doesn't apply is if you had a, let's say, a plus bc over 2ab. Now, because there's a plus sign, here I've got two terms in the numerator. I've got a and I've got bc because they're being added, and I've got one term at the bottom. So here I've got two terms, and in the denominator I've got one term, and that's where this video is not going to really be going to be applicable. In the sort of it's much a higher level looking at simplifying these types of fractions however what we're going to be focused on in this video is when you've got one single term on the numerator and a single term on the denominator so let's have a look at some example questions so the question is asking us to simplify the following divisions so even though you can't see a division symbol they're written as a fraction which basically means they're being divided so looking at question a we've got 10 a over Two. Now here we've got a number and a letter at the top and we've got a single number at the bottom. Now how we go about simplifying this is remembering the previous note that you can only simplify numbers with numbers and common letters with common letters. So here this can be written as 10 over 2 times a and 10 over 2 is 5 so your final answer is 5a. Another way of deriving that answer is to cancel both those numbers by 2 in which we end up like so and I can write Again, write your final answer as 5a. Moving on to question b, we've got 9ab over 3. Now again, we can write this as 9 over 3 and then times ab. 
And the reason why AB hasn't got a fraction over 3 is because it's not needed. So here I've got 9 over 3, which simplifies to give me 3. And so that becomes 3 over 1. So what that then becomes is 3AB over 1, which is the same as 3AB. And again, what I could have done is, rather than having to show my working out, because I've just done it on the question, divided both those numbers by 3. And again, I'd get 3AB over 1. And when you divide by 1, it's just the same. So it's just 3AB. Moving on to question C. Again, now here we've got a letter at the bottom. So here, how I can write question C is I've got 4B over B. And I can split that up as 4 times B over B. Now, B over B is just 1 because they just cancel out. So all I'm left with is 4. And again, what I could have done is rather than showing my work, and I could have done it on the question, they cancel out, just leaving me with the answer of 4. Now, when it moves on to question D, again, I'm looking at what's common about the, both the top and the bottom. So the top, the numerator's only got a number, so I can't cancel the 5. However, they've both got an A, so I can cancel an A from the top, an A from the bottom, leaving me with just 5C. When it moves on to question E, again, I've got numbers. So I can, looking at the numbers, I've got 15 and 5. What goes to both 15 and 5 or 5? So I can divide 15 by 5, I get 3. 5 divided by 5 is 1. I've got a B on both sides, so I can cancel them down, leaving me with just 3A over 1, which is just 3A. And then finally for question F, again, I can simplify looking at the numbers. I've got 20 and 4, so I simplify that by dividing both numbers by 5. Uh, by 4 rather, so I get 5 and 1. I've got a squared, so I can cancel that a, because a squared is a a. So how I could write this is 20 a a b over 4 a b. So I cancel the 20 and the 4, even with 5 on the top and 1 at the bottom. And I cancel that a with that a, and then I cancel the b with the b. And I write down whatever's not been crossed off or simplified. So on the top, I'm left with 5 a. And at the bottom, I'm just left with 1, leaving me with the final answer of 5a. So again, looking at this, I can just cancel them down. And there we go. So looking at some other examples. Now, here we've got the division symbol in which all I've got to do is just translate this into using, the, uh, using fractions instead. So question 1 can be written as 6a cubed over 5a. So again, looking at this, I can cancel, I can't cancel the numbers, so they stay the same. However, I can cancel 1a with one of those, leaving with 2. So the final answer here is going to be 6a squared over 5. With question 2, I've got 8p squared over 5p to the power of 4. So again, I can't cancel the numbers down because there isn't a number that goes into both 8 and 5. However, looking at the p's, well, I've got 2 at the top, so I can cancel 2 of them and I'm left with 2 at the bottom. So the answer is going to be 8 over 5p squared. Looking at question 3, I've got 5c squared over 4c to the power of 7. And again, I can write this as 5 over 4 times c squared over c to the power of 7. And then if that makes it easier for you to simplify, well, I can't do anything with the 5 and the 4, but I can do something with the c's. So I take away the powers. So I take away 2 from there, so I've got to take away 2 from the bottom, leaving me with just 5 over 4c to the power of 5. Looking at question 4, I've got 3c to the power of 5 over 2c squared. So again, that's the same as 3c, c, 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 c over 2c, c. Again, I can cancel I cancel 1 from the top, I've got to cancel 1 from the bottom. I can't do anything with the numbers, so what I'm left with 3c cubed over 2. With question 5, I've got 7r to the power of 5 over 4r squared. So again, I can't do anything with the numbers, but I can get do something with the r's. So I'm left with 3 at the top, so I'm left with 7r cubed over 4. So not everything disappears, you might find yourself left with some things. So with question 6, I've got 21a squared over 7a to the power 5. Now here I can simplify the numbers. So I can treat this as 21 over 7 times a squared over a to the power 5. So looking at this, I can simplify 21 7, so dividing both numbers by 
7. And I can cancel the two A's from the top, leaving me with 1. And I can leave that as a 3. So what I'm left with is 3 over A cubed. And there is my final answer. Moving on to question 7. I've got 9P cubed over 18P cubed. So again, dealing with the numbers, I can simplify that because dividing both numbers by 9. So I'm left with 1 and 2 at the bottom. I can cancel the P at the bottom and I cancel 1 from the top. So I'm left with 2. So looking at this, I can't cancel the Q. So all I'm left with is P squared over 2Q. And there we go. And looking at question 8, I've got 24 T to the power 7 over 18 T squared. So simplifying this, I can divide, looking at the numbers, what number goes into both 24 and 18? Well, you want to always think big, so I can divide both numbers by 6. So that's going to be 4 and 3. I can cancel the 2 t's at the bottom, leaving me with 5 at the top, and then it becomes 4 t to the power 5 over 3. There we go. And looking at question 9, we've got 2 d cubed over 6 d to the power 7. So again, simplifying the numbers, I can divide both numbers by 2. So I've got 1 and 3. And then dealing with the d's, I can eliminate all 3 from the top. Take away 3 from the bottom, leaving with 4. Probably shouldn't have crossed out that d, so let's just get rid of that. And half the question, so that should be a 7. And what we've got then is 1 over 3d to the power of 4. Now just be careful that when you are cancelling things off, off from the question that you don't you do know what you're doing you don't make sure you don't cross off things that you shouldn't really have crossed off question 10 we've got 12 f to the 8 over 16 f to the 2 so again simplifying the numbers divide both numbers by 4 in which I'm left with 3 and 4 and I can cancel the 2 f's at the bottom take 2 off the top so I'm left with 3 f to the 6 over 4 with question 11 I've got 5n squared m over 4n cubed m to the power of 4. Now again, what this translated is 5n n m over 4n n n m m m m. So again, I can only cancel whatever this common. So the numbers I can't cancel down because 5 and 4, there isn't a number that goes into it. If I can cancel that n with that n, that n with that n, that m with that m. And then all I've then got to do is write down what I've got on both the numerator and the denominator. So at the top, I've just got 5. At the bottom, I've got a 4. I've got a single n. And I've got m cubed. And again, you could have easily just cancelled down what we did here. But again, you just need to be mindful of how messy it potentially looks. But as long as you get from there to the correct answer, then that's going to be absolutely fine. So moving on to question 12. So here we've got... Uh, 7 p to the power 4 q divided by 2 p squared q to the 6. Now again, looking at the numbers, there's not much I can do with that. However, I've got two p's at the bottom, so I can cancel that down. So I've got two left at the top. I've got q at the top, which I can cancel, leaving with 5 at the bottom. So here this then becomes 7 p squared over 2 q to the power of 5. And looking at question 13, I've got 8b cubed c squared over 5bc to the power of 6. Again, nothing to do with the numbers, but I can cancel the b with, from the bottom, so I've left with 2 at the top, and cancel the 2 c's, even with 4 at the bottom. So then what I'm left with is 8b squared over 5b to the power c to the power of 4. And then with question 14, I've got 5a to the 7, b to the power 5, over 4a squared, b cubed. So again, simplifying, nothing to do with the numbers. I can take, oh, maybe not 7. Let's take the 2a's from the bottom. Take, so I'm left with 5, and take the 3 from the bottom, leaving me with 2 at the top, leaving me with 5a to the power of 5, b squared, and with nothing at the left at the bottom, or there's a 4, sorry. And there we go. So again, very easy for you to sort of ignore anything that you crossed off, so you've just got to be wary. And then with question 15, which I'll just do at the top over here, I've got 
7q to the 5 r squared over 4q squared r cubed. So again, cancelling things down, nothing to do with the numbers. Cancel the two q's, even with three at the top, and the two r's, even with just a single r. So it's going to be 7q cubed over 4r. And then question 16 is 16ab to the 5 over 4a to the 4b squared. Now here I can cancel the numbers down. So I can cancel that to a 4 and a 1 at the bottom. Cancel the a at the top, so I'm left with 3 at the bottom. And cancel the 2b's at the bottom, leaving me with 3 at the top. And all in all, I'm left with 4b cubed over a cubed. And there is my final answer. So now moving on to the last four questions. Now again, in terms of marks, you probably get a mark for every single term that you've correctly simplified. So we've got 21 p to the power 5 q over 7 p squared over q 5. So again, you probably get marked for simplifying the numbers, the p's and the q's. So simplifying the numbers, I can divide both numbers by th uh, 7, leaving me with 3 and 1. I've got two p's, they cancel out, leaving me with three, and I cancel the q at the top, leaving me with four at the bottom, so that becomes three p cubed at the top, and q to the power of four at the bottom. Question 18, I've got five s squared t seven over 20 s cubed t squared. So again, simplifying the numbers, so I can divide both numbers by five, so leaving me with one and four. Two S's cancel out, I'm left with one at the bottom, and the two T's at the bottom cancel out, leaving me with five at the top, so I'm left with T to the power of five over four S. And there we go. Now if you were to write a one, you wouldn't lose any marks, but generally when you've only got one thing you don't use, you mention the number. Then moving on to question 19, we've got 12 C to the power of seven D cubed over nine C to the power of four D to the power of six. So simplifying, looking at the numbers, what number goes to both 12 and 9? It's going to be 3, so that becomes a 3 at the bottom and 4 at the top. Cancel the 4 C's at the bottom, so I'm left with 3 at the top, and cancel the 3 D's at the top, leaving me with 3 at the bottom. So what I'm left with is 4 C cubed at the top and 3 D cubed at the bottom. And then finally, for the very last one, which I'm sure you'll be thankful of, we've got question 20. We've got 24 F squared G not Q, let's get rid of that, and we've got G to the power of 4 over 18 F to the 5 G to the 7. So again, simplifying the numbers, I can divide both numbers by 6, and even with 4, I can cancel the 2 F's at the top, leaving me with 3 at the bottom, and cancel the 4 G's at the top, leaving me with 3 at the bottom, being with a final answer of 4 over 3 f cubed g cubed and there is my final answer now we'll put some practice questions in the description below for you to practice everything that's covered in this video